Wow. I was expecting this movie to be nothing special, since I'm not a huge Barbie person as an adult myself. But you'll see why that I think that wasn't the case in a few minutes. <laughs> Yo, what is up my Cinedroids? G to the S here. Today, I'm gonna be reviewing a movie based on the most popular Mattel toy that girls everywhere had played with since childhood, simply titled in the same font and the same look as the toys themselves, the one, the only, Barbie. About, of course, Barbie herself, played by none other than Margot Robbie and Ken, played by Ryan Gosling, who are having the time of their lives in the colorful and seemingly perfect world of Barbie Land. However, when they get the chance to go to the real world, they soon discover the joys and perils of living amongst the humans. Ah, so we have a fish out of water type of storyline in this movie, huh? We haven't seen those in a while. Now, first off, I gotta touch on the film's practical effects and set design for a second. Sure, most of the movie was done through green screen. But I don't see any CGI in this movie. Mostly every scene in this movie is filmed on a set and filmed on location. And as an audience member, I appreciate the effort that the filmmakers put into when it comes to making everything look like the toys that young girls played with as kids. Props to Warner Brothers for making the environments in this movie look very vibrant and colorful. Even the camera work and cinematography fits the feeling that you are in a universe where every girl and guy, let's not exclude them, live together where they can pretty much do anything they want. And the way that the camera pans through every single scene, it's like a well-crafted museum where you have the opportunity to gaze upon the beauty of this world that the characters reside in. Again, kudos to the people operating the cameras into making this world feel lived in. Okay, so they got the look and feel of this world down. Jot that off the list. What about the characters and story? Now, I'm not saying that this movie is original. In fact, this movie is like if Toy Story and Enchanted were meshed into one Barbie movie. <laughs> I mean, coincidentally enough, it is based on one of the most popular Mattel toys out there. And Barbie was first featured in the Toy Story series before, so that's not a shocker. But the way they executed the story, it feels like the filmmakers wanted to tell a comedic tale on the toy line and make it suitable for all audiences, not just girls. Well, maybe not the youngest of kids, but the audiences who grew up with the franchise mostly. Or just the people who want nothing to do with this franchise, like me. Although I did have my fair share of playing the online Barbie games as a kid before. There was also this weird toy line that's similar to Barbie, but it went out a business called my scene sure it looked cool as a kid but as an adult now i was like oh gosh thank god the toy line went out of style and i'm probably the wrong demographic for those dolls anyway the only toy line that won the battle was barbie and judging on how this film is going and crossing that one billion dollar mark at the box office they nailed their target demographic big time and speaking of characters in comedy, some of their comedic antics felt a little forced, not a whole lot, but some of the biggest laughs come from the situational shenanigans that the characters get themselves into. And that's what I enjoyed the most about the comedy. But at the same time, they don't make the slapstick too childish. They have just the right amount of humor that not only fits the character's personality, but it also helps the story move quicker. And with the careful direction coaching from director Greta Gerwig, the actors and actresses not only helped sell the comedic antics and chemistry, but they also brought out some well-executed emotion as well. And let me tell you, no spoilers, but that last scene in this movie reminded me of the last scene from The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King, where Frodo Baggins left Middle Earth after a whole year of holding the one ring around his little neck and carrying it to Mount Doom, dropped the damn ring into the lava and destroying evil. That was honestly a very heart-wrenching moment to watch. I almost welled up in tears. Again, I won't spoil anything else about that. Just go see the movie and watch that moment and you'll know what I'm talking about. Now, if I have to think of problems with this movie, I only have one, but it's not a major complaint at all. It's more of a small nitpick. But Ryan Gosling's portrayal of Ken can come off as a typical comedy relief of the group, but at the same time, you later on find out that he's more than that, which again, no spoilers. It's not my job to give away plot points that may ruin the movie for you. If you think that I'm doing a horrible job at that, 
to the haters out there, you need to get yourselves checked because you must be not be right in the head. But other than that, guys, in the end, the new Barbie movie was better than I thought it was gonna be. It was funny, it was colorful, the set looked amazing, and it was really heartwarming towards the end. Again, go see this movie and find out for yourselves. But as a result, I rate Barbie four out of five stars. Never thought I would say that when it comes to a Barbie thing in general. But this movie reignited my childhood memories of watching the three classic VHS movies with Kelly Sheridan voicing the toy star herself. So if you guys haven't got the chance to see it yet, I highly recommend it. So Barbie, have you seen it? If you haven't, you are totally missing out. Even if you're not a Barbie fan growing up, go see this movie once you still have the chance. But for those of you who have, Come back and let me know in the comments what you thought about it. Also, if you like this video and you want to see some more, make sure that like button shines in your face. That'll totally help me out a ton. Also, share it with your family and friends and favorite it. That's a very good way to show support for this review. Also, if you're new to my channel, make sure to subscribe and ring that bell right next to you so you can be notified of future videos that I have in store for you. Also, if you want to shout out a future video, just follow me on both Instagram and X and I will choose one of my Cinedroids to be displayed as a shout out. The link's in the description below. Also, also, I set up a Patreon page for you guys where you don't have to do this if you don't want to. I understand. Life is hard. But if there's a rare chance that you are interested in doing so, there's a link in the description so that way you can follow my page and gain access to up to four membership tiers. On my page, I post reviews a week early before you get to see them posted on this channel. I also plan to do commentaries on TV show episodes and movies that I love so much and a whole variety of content on my page as well. So if that's your cup of tea, Go to the link below, become a patron, and let's get to know each other a bit more. Also, if you want to subscribe to my gaming channel, there's either a link in the description or at the icon card at the top right corner of your screen. Go over there, subscribe, and let's just have fun together. Also, if you want to subscribe to my GS Productions After Dark channel, where I review movies, TV shows, and video games that are for a mature audience, there's a link in the description so that way you can subscribe to that channel if you're feeling frisky. But until then, I'll see you next time. Peace out.